What's up guys? Your daily dose of Bible Meets Life starts now. Awesome. Well guys, hello, welcome to Bible Meets Life. Our platform focuses on social issues within the digital space, but we leverage our foundation on Christ, right? So we kind of look at things in a different perspective in the lens of Christ. So in our, oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, our goal is just to create a more effective way of communication through the devices of social media such as Facebook, Snapchat, right. Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, etc., etc. Yeah, that's good. And so today we're continuing our series on social shaming, and we're going to spotlight body shaming, right? Because everyone's affected by it, you know? I mean, now more than ever, we just need to develop better ways of engagement on social media. You know, just to really engage more effectively with our community in both the physical space and the digital space. To grow outside ourselves so we can, what, you know, be more diversely minded. Um, just to, you know, in all spaces, right? Right. Yeah. And uh, we just need to create a more mindful approach as we communicate on social media to gain a better sense of value and respect for ourselves and the community. That's right, and that's great. So guys, I'm happy that you tuned in, um, and let's go ahead and get this broadcast started, awesome. okay? All right, so like we mentioned, you know, we're excited, to, we're talk, talking about a new series called Social Shaming. Um, so just kind of to recap on what just, what exactly is social shaming? You know, let's just kind of talk about that. Yeah, totally. So personal image and social, me social media are connected in such a way that it can influence the way we view ourselves uh, to meet the opinions of those around us. That's right. Um, and we're just living in an age where consumption of social media is a daily compulsion and the viewing of others and other people's lives now happens on a massive level. Oh, that is so true. So true. We see it all day long, right? And you know, with this constant you know, consumption of social media, you know, it, it has a direct effect on our minds. I mean, just mm -hmm. directly affected our minds. And it tends to kind of erase the distinction and the discernment between how we view ourselves both on the online, you know, social media space and in our physical lives, right? That's so true. Yeah. So, like, today we want to talk about one of the most frequently occurring situations uh, pertaining to lacking discernment and distinction uh, while sim simultaneously living on social media and in our physical lives, yeah. um, and it's called body shaming. Body shaming, that's so, right. So, uh, while body shaming can most definitely occur offline, you know, in our physical spaces, uh, most of it takes place online on social platforms today. It's true, it does. Uh, so no matter how this manifests, it often leads to comparison and shame, yeah. and uh, perpetuates the idea that people should be judged mainly for their physical features. Oh, wow, that is right on. You know, and it does. So, you know, I have a question for you and for the audience. If you're just now tuning in, if you are just now tuning in, I want you to click share in the bottom corner and just share this broadcast out because someone's going to want to hear it. You know, we're really kind of going deep on body shaming. It's, it's not just like one like one thing, right? And there's so many different avenues of it. Yeah. I mean, things that you didn't even know about and that we're going to kind of explore today, right? So, like, my, regarding my question, you know, have you guys ever stopped to think um, how often we are told to change our appearance? You know, think about it. Platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Periscope, you know, Snapchat, and all the rest, um, they constantly have celebrities or just like people like us, right? Even um, influencers pushing and promoting an array of products and tips or ideas. I mean, we see it every day and oftentimes promising physical change or enhancement. You know, with like, you know, for instance, like the most popular being things is like waist trainers, you know, lip injections, hair extensions, weight loss teas. I mean, we see it across the board. And these are just a few, just a few, just by simply scrolling through our newsfeed, you know, our Facebook pages, our Instagram pages, pages or Snapchat, I mean, but we see it, right? We're all affected by it. You're so right, and personally, I've definitely seen at least one of those ads, you know, this yeah, week, and absolutely. Fact, probably even today. And the scary thing is that these ideas can be pushed uh, with intention of it being either a discernible advertisement or promotion, yeah, right. like a commercial or sponsor sponsorship opportunity that is promoted as yeah. such. Um, or it can be a more subconscious approach um, that resembles something more like the encouragement of an idea or tip. Wow, I really, I really love what you just said. You know, you know, some that when we see these type of like advertisements to alter our appearance, you know, to maybe enhance something, you know, oftentimes it's a psychological, like it's subconscious, yeah. right? I mean, they're trying to target an insecurity. 
Um, and it's we don't see that because we just see, oh, this could be an opportunity, but it's really leveraging um, our just in our our identity and the way we want to see ourselves or the way they want to see us. And we don't even realize it. it's so subconscious, right? Yeah. I mean, it's sad, and you know, um, you know, the sad thing is most of the time, you know, us people that we're being targeted with, you know, with like, we're be our insecurities are being targeted. Right. You know, I mean, they are. I mean, we all have them. You know, like for instance, me. Um, you wouldn't believe it, but I'm the, I'm the shortest guy in my whole family. Like, okay, I'm taller than my mom. Okay. I'm taller than my mom. <laughs> Thank God. No, actually, I'm taller than my dad too, but. My brothers, my daughter, my son, I mean, they are all, um, I mean, they're just taller than me. And I'm like, oh, it's an insecurity of mine, right? It's an insecurity of mine. But, you know, we all have them. You see, you know, we're led to believe, you know, these like people, you know, we're led to believe by social media that whatever physical characteristic that we're born with, you know, it's not acceptable. Or maybe, let me rephrase that. Maybe it's not aesthetically pleasing to our social society right and so this type of social deception and that's what we kind of want to call it right because yeah. it is it's social deception and hey I see you guys tuning in if you're just not tuning in click share share this broadcast out someone's gonna want to talk about it and hear about it because we're talking about body image social image you know body shaming things like that so it's really good so like we were talking about you know this type of social deception you know it's created by me, I mean, I'm a little convicted by it. It's created by online, like marketers, advertisers, and that's my industry, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about that in a minute. But it's created by marketers and advertisers um, that have a simple grasp, grasp of psychology mm -hmm. to realign our God given unique identity. You know, Sophie? I mean, it's things that we're equipped with, yeah. you know, they leverage those things. And they leverage, like, our insecurities because I feel, you know, short. I, don't, I need a a, a taller shoe, right? I mean, we'll, they'll see that, and you know, to be based on these, you know, so they 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 leverage and they you know leverage our insecurities um, to just realign our God-given unique identity yeah. to be based on an identity of comparisons. Yeah, yeah, that is impossible to live up to. It's just impossible, and this type of identity. It creates a self-blamed mindset because I blame myself. I mean, oh, you know, it's my fault. You know, it's my fault that I have these hang-ups, right? And it's all fueled by a false reality of I'm not unsuccessful, I'm not happy with myself. You know, that is this psychological, you know, it's psychologically created. Um, it's the way we interpret, our, our, you know, these qualities of ourselves that that they're called they're like these so-called flaws right mm -hmm. but they're not flaws they're not flaws they're just who we are how we're made right yeah and Man. these mar marketers don't really know anything That's about true, their they don't. audience yeah or anything about their appearance but know just how to capture the lost and desperate mm -hmm. person yeah. uh, seeking the cure to these imperfections that mm -hmm. are criticized on social media that's absolutely right so absolutely um, right. a good question is who exactly is deciding what these imperfections are mm. and who is deciding what perfection looks like or should look like? That's a good question because right now, up until this point, we're leaving that in the hands of these marketers, right? Mm. If we're allowing ourselves to be blindly aware of it. Yeah. You know, if we don't like, yeah, if we don't realize our true identity and we allow everything around us that society has created like all these cool products or these you know platform shoes i don't wear platform shoes <laughs> but you know anything that makes you taller or what fill in the blank insecurity but whatever it is that's available we allow those things to supplement you know our identity to, or lack of identity there you go lack of identity <laughs> yeah. right then we're not we're not allowing ourselves to like lead that, right? We're yeah. allowing society to lead that, and it's really dangerous, you know? you know. I'll tell you, although social image covers many different perceptions, and guys, if you're just now tuning in, click share, share this broadcast out. Someone's gonna wanna hear it. And we're talking about just social, you know, like body shaming and social shame and things like that, and really self-identity shame, right? Because yeah. that's what it kind of leads to. Um, you know, it's it covers many different perceptions. I mean, 
visual, we, we talked about psychological, or we talked about up until this point, yeah. and now emotional. Yeah. Definitely emotional. You know, and how a person views his or her um, appearance in general. You know, the most obvious today is kind of visual, yeah. right? Because we are, we're on these social platforms, we're being visually engaged by Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, everything, and it's these platforms that are leading us, right? Mm -hmm. And with this shift in attention, I mean, because it is a shift towards fixing our so-called flaws, and our flaws don't need to be fixed because it's our self-identity, right. right? But we're allowing social media and social society to say, hey, this is a flaw, you know, it's not socially acceptable, so you need to be fixed, you need to fix it. You know, it's this shift in attention, attention towards fixing our so-called flaws that marketers, they, they use psychology to create this inner justification to the consumer, right? Mm -hmm. Selling us the idea on just how easy it is and socially right yeah. it is. Now think about that because they're saying, you know what, this is socially right. And if you're not doing it, if you're not altering yourself, if you're not improving yourself, um, changing your appearance, right, then you're not socially acceptable. Yeah. And, you know, it's how easy it is to be, you know, the idea is you know, how easy it is and how socially right it is to mask our true identity yeah. or what they call a social flaw. Yeah. Right? I mean, that is so scary. Yeah, so um, while these marketers, you know, pushing and promoting these products or ideas yeah. feign concern and fake a genuine desire mm -hmm. to fix the consumer's flaws, right. they mask why they are really marketing that idea or product. Absolutely. Which is usually a selfishly beneficial reason for themselves. Yeah. Um, right. And once they sell this product, they have convinced the consumer that not only they have a flaw that has been acknowledged, not only by the, the company, but by the person owning that flaw, yeah. um, they have a product available to fix their problems. Oh, right. And not only the physical, visible ones they can see in the mirror every day, mm -hmm. um, but the life problems supposedly caused by that flaw. Gosh, it's scary. And it starts at such a young age. Mm -hmm. I mean, seven years old, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, they're just, I mean, we've seen, you know, I remember back a while ago, before social media really took off, um, it was more leveraged by TV sitcoms. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, you know. I remember. I remember one that comes to memory um, is um, oh gosh, it's Tierra's. Uh, it's a it's a show with these like ch children, and it's called S something in Tierra's. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Toddlers and Tierra's. Toddlers and Tierra's. <laughs> right. I mean. And, you know, we used to think, oh, you know, that's a very niche um, space because not everybody does pageants like that. Well, because of social media, we are all a part of a pageant. Yeah. Do we realize that? Like, we are all a part of pageants every single day. And social media and marketers and branders are leveraging our insecurities and just, like, what's trending to put us on this platform, to put us on this runway of like, you know, of comparison. And the sad thing is, you don't even have to leave your room. You can like sit yeah. in your room <laughs> in dark scrolling and be on this runway of life, yeah. this runway of socially acceptable life, right? Mm -hmm. Path, and it's dangerous. I mean, we've never seen it before to this degree because everyone's a part of it, you know? And I'll tell you, mo you know, most importantly, the marketer, you know, they not only change the physical appearance of the consumer, at least, you know, they kind of promise to, you know, they also convince that the decision that the consumer took, you know, that we take um, to acknowledge and to fix our so-called flaws is something that we did personally, right? Yeah. And that we're doing it for ourselves to meet our own happiness, yeah. you know, for our own happiness. And when we, we don't even realize it's happening, that these actions are based on the perceptions and opinions of others mm -hmm. and not on the true identity that we know of ourselves, that like yeah. we see our, in ourselves, right? I mean, wow. Or the love that they have for themselves. That's right, or the love that they have for themselves. Or should have. Or should have, right. Hey guys, if you're just now broadcasting, if you're just, not, just now tuning in, click share. Share this broadcast out right now. Someone wants, someone's going to want to hear it. 
It's very important. Um, I don't think many people are really talking about this, you know? Yeah. Um, at least to this degree, so it's great. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, so kind of talking about um, the marketers, uh, yeah. not only have they given the consumer a false sense of security that you know they're making their own decisions, yeah. um, but they have also given them the false image of having control oh. or autonomy over yes. their own personal decisions when what really happened was that a money-hungry company targeted a vulnerable consumer yeah. or customer and made them believe that buying their product was a choice that they made by themselves, for themselves, and for nobody else. Wow. And this kind of just speaks directly to my industry because you may not know, but I work in advertising. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm always, I mentioned this in the last broadcast, um, you know, back back a while, I saw your phone, and I was like, wait, is that my phone? Like, Are we streaming live? Oh, no. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. Blanked out. Blanked out. You know, I was thinking about a conversation I had last broadcast um, about just my career, and back when I first started, or even up to this point, it was, okay, is the company that I'm going to be marketing for, um, do they have good values, right? Yeah. Are they criminals? Okay, <laughs> simple. Um, are they in the drug industry, as in like narcotics, bad? Okay, are they in the alcohol, because I don't want to really promote that either. Yeah. Or are they in the like sex industry, like do I, I don't want to promote that either. Like even to the degree of like Victoria's Secrets, I mean, I really believe that they, they have a lot of body shaming yeah. platforms, you know, like issues yeah. as well, because they create a false um, representation of what a w woman really should be and should look like and it's valuable, but yeah. we won't go down that road. But anyway, I look at companies like that, I'm like, okay, I don't want, I don't want to really campaign for them because I don't believe in that. Right. Um, but now I realize it's, a, it's so much deeper and so much broader, right? I mean, if I'm selling, um, if I'm selling a makeup product, and the, make, the makeup product, maybe it, it looks good, but I know that the, the chemicals or the, the ingredients of that product are not good. Yeah. They're like, you know, they're, they, it's like animal-based products yeah. or something that's cruelty or things like that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're, maybe it is a good product, but their marketing campaign mm -hmm. is to leverage on your insecurities yeah. in life like, hey, you don't look good because you, you're not wearing the right product, wear this. Yeah. Or maybe it's not that aggressive, but maybe it's sub, like, um, sub, what's the word? A subconscious. Subconscious, yeah. like, yeah, subtle in a subconscious way. Then, oh man, I don't know if I can really market them, them anymore because I don't want to, I don't want to leverage someone's insecurities yeah. because it leads them away from who they truly are. Yeah, yeah it's, it's dangerous. It's more than just, ouch, that kind of hurt, that, you know, I feel inadequate. It's more of, you know, it, that's going to be something that they're going to remember forever. Oh, my gosh. And it's generational. Yeah. Because their mom, their kids will see their mother purchasing this product and their mother, mother or father or whatever. I mean, even could go into their father, like cars, yeah. like money, where they're putting the, their time. They're buying, like, you know, a Lambo or like a, maybe even a brand new Mercedes on the premise, on the premise that they want to keep up with society and they want to, their friends next door bought a Tesla and they have to buy a new car just to kind of meet that expectation. That is the same thing as what we're talking about. It's yeah. shaming. It's shaming. It's image shaming, right? And, and it's really interesting that you talk about generational yeah. uh, consumption of these um, ideas or products. Yeah. Um, recently, I was reading an article about... Um, the concept of lightening or whitening your skin oh, in yeah. uh, darker households like Hispanic or, or black house households that they buy these lightening creams with bleach in it, which obviously is so bad for yeah. you and it can cause problems later down in the road. But it's these products that have been marketed towards these families and towards these communities and towards these households specifically. Mm. Um, and it just yeah. goes you know, generationally, because they see their grandmother using this, they see their mother using yep. this, they see their sisters using this, and it's just this idea that 
it's okay that it's okay and it's because everyone else is doing it mm -hmm. and because obviously there's results behind it and yeah. not only physical result but how people react to you and how people treat you outside yeah. of your home that's true that they continue buying this stuff. and I can speak to that directly and, and guys if you're just now tuning in we're talking about image shaming body shaming mm -hmm. um, it's really great and I want you to click share share this broadcast out right now someone's going to want to hear it because I mean Sophie has done a really good job in bringing a lot of information to our table um, you know, she is the Gen Z, right? I think you're Generation Z. 1998. Yeah. So, um, and she really kind of speaks to anyone below the age of 23 yeah. in that demographic. So, um, share this broadcast out right now because someone's going to want to hear it. If you're just now tuning in, finish this broadcast out and then rewind it, watch it to in, in, in its entirety. You know, to kind of expand on what you just said, um, I work in the space of advertising and what we do is we... It's called like geo-targeting. So we'll look at, well, maybe I have a product, like a bleaching product. Well, I'll look at, okay, what type of consumer is this? And so then, demographic? Demographically, right. And then I'll look at, okay, social economic, like how much money, you know, how much, what's the income of this yeah. base, of this type of consumer? And then we'll start mapping them out. And we'll specifically target media campaigns and media blasts and TV and radio to those demographics and to those geo-targeted areas mm -hmm. so that they will stay in that state, constant state of consumption and it will be generational. We'll kind of keep them yeah. in that net. And um, it's very dangerous and it's very unfair. It's unfair it to the consumer because they, don't have, they have no idea why they're seeing these type of commercials all day long. Yeah. Well, I do <laughs> because I'm targeting them yeah. because I know that this is their mindset that this is their insecurity and I'm going to leverage that so I can yeah. make monetize it and make money off them. Yeah. It's, it's like why I'm quitting every, quitting my job today. No. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> unfortunately the reason why you know this type of marketer marketing um, ploy exists and is, and is successful is because we now teach that self-satisfaction and entitlement are good. We do, we kind of teach that. Yeah. And that pleasure and happiness are the highest good. You know, hedonism, right? And we're gonna talk about that in a moment. And we encourage that people, uh, we encourage that uh, people to do, them, to do things for themselves yeah. and rather than do them for others, right? Yeah. It's a self-centered society. Um, things that make us feel good, you know, um, which are created, which, you know, are created to sell us a product of shallowness, right? Yeah. Keep, 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 it, keep us at this shallow, self-centered based mindset, you know, and it kind of leads to a superficial identity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so going back to hedonism, right. um, I actually, we, I personally talked about this with my Bible teacher when yeah. I was in high school, and hedonism is a philosophy that actually talks about um, selfishness is a... Um, organic or naturally occurring trait in humans which is true because mm -hmm. naturally we're gonna do things that we want to do and things that please us and things that give uh, bring us happiness but don't necessarily do that for other people right um, one of the largest people leveraging this philosophy now in current times is um, an author a German author named Ayn Rand mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of her um, but she has a book I believe it's called The Fountainhead um, and she kind of talks about how, yes, selfishness is a trait in us, in every person, but you should be fulfilling that, that those selfish desires that you have um, and doing things for yourself. So if you see something, you're like, I want this for myself, or I want to look this way for myself, or I want to do this or be friends with this person because it's going to benefit me, All right. then you should do it because you can't change it. Oh, man. And it's definitely something... The, um, the most organic form of hedonism doesn't exist so much today, but it's definitely intertwined with a more new age approach to absolutely, ideas. absolutely. And I believe it's kind of, I mean, it ties into uh, like what social media marketers and branders yeah. are doing. I mean, you know, it's psychological, yeah. right? And it's behavioral design and change, and that's what they're trying to leverage. I mean, that's what they're doing. I mean, I see it every all day long, and that's so dangerous it's really dangerous yeah 
Um, so now that we've kind of explained why this vicious cycle continues, because it is a cycle. It is a cycle. It's two-way. Yeah. Um, how can we prevent both body shaming and discourage the production of ads that promote that concept and promise to fix a physical flaw that we have? Yeah. Um, and it's all about self-awareness. And we've kind of all talked about. about this in past mm -hmm. broadcasts. Right. Uh, how sometimes we're just big screens where we just kind of take everything in or big sponges, you know. But um, not only should we be aware and analyzing what we are looking at, mm -hmm. um, but we should also question our own intentions. Oh, that's good. Um, instead of having a company state what they are. That's a really good point you make. I mean, it's our motives. Like, why am I buying a brand new Lexus? Yeah. <laughs> or like, why am I, why do I feel slightly, you know. Inclined. <clears throat> what? Inclined. Yeah, inclined, or yeah, to buy a new iPhone 8. Like you know, why you know it's 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 question that intention, that motive behind making that choice or that action. And if it's if it's motivated by an insecurity, or if it's motivated by a society that's around us. I mean, we live in Plano, Texas. I mean, yeah. it's <laughs> it's hard to live here. I mean, it really is. You think it's not, but it's very hard because if you're centered in your own identity, and then if also if you have you know, some biblical foundation where you understand what's truly valuable in life, then, wow, how can you live the American dream? How can you sh try to work toward an American dream when the American dream is based on what society has created to leverage our insecurities just to be a consumer? Yeah. <laughs> Not a good business model. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good business model, in my point of view. Yeah. But it's we're all it's ep it's epidemic, and it's everybody's a part of it. And it's so funny because when the the concept American Dream was first coined, it was about um, ultimately having your family safe and um, financially stable. But now yeah. it's more. When you actually talk to you know people outside of the U.S. or just coming into the U.S. about the American Dream, a lot of um, their perspectives about the American Dream has a lot to do with um, materialism. Absolutely. And Absolutely. social standing. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a great point, and I'm happy you mentioned that. Yeah. Um, hey guys, we see you're tuning in. If you're just now tuning in, click share. Share this broadcast out. Someone's going to want to hear. What we're talking about image shaming, body shaming, and really just social shaming, and yeah. how we're all a part of it, um, and really how to, how to pivot away from it. Because because of social media, and it, it everyone's affected from every yeah. generation. It's, gen it's multi-generational, you know? So, what you know, just kind of what is the solution, you know? Uh, well, so once you've kind of identified the root of your unhappiness, right? So that self-examination, you know, just decide on whether or not that negative feeling, you know, maybe it's a um, insecurity, like I feel bad about because I don't have a Vinger Vine shirt or whatever it is. You know, where is it coming from? Like, what place is it coming from? Is it coming from, you know, a good positive reinforcement? Or is it coming from someone or something that is truly negative? Like, you know, that's giving you like a negative image of it's not really a negative image. It's just it give you like a negative impression of yourself. Yeah. Because the image of yourself is not a mirror or a reflection of the image that society has created around us. You know, so it's just like a, it's a bunch of mirrors, right? <laughs> and you gotta be careful about that. You know, so for example, like for me, like if I'm feeling slightly disappointed about on my self image, right? Um, I could either be inspired to exercise by hearing a speech on Instagram or a YouTube video or a Facebook post of like taking care of my body or, or secondly, you know, alternatively, I could be crushed because I'm feeling in, inadequate to being compared to somebody that I see on Instagram or Facebook, yeah. right? So it's a two-way street and you just really have to kind of define, de I guess determine, you know, which path you're going to take. Because body shaming, you know, it's as a whole, it's not right. You know, you know, with like with spiritual reinforcement and encouragement to take care of ourselves, you know, um, and have fun, you know, th with our appearance, that's perfectly okay. I mean, that's great. You know, we want that, um, but we don't want to 
compare ourselves that you know from a society that's saying we're not a adequate you know that we're inadequate I mean those are the, that, that's the path that it's gonna lead to self-destruction you know yeah. completely self-destruction and you know Timothy 3 um, verses 1 through 17 says just a quick um, like overview yeah. you know, it just says but understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self Right. Lovers of money, abusive, heartless, unaccusable, brutal, not loving good, oh, gosh. Um, treacherous, reckless, um, someone with conceit, lovers of pleasure, like hedonism, right. um, rather than lovers of God. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, not only are the people selling this idea of fixing flaws, or that you should be fixing these flaws, um, but... Um, and these companies are money-hungry, deceptive, and abusive. Yeah, that's true. Um, because they're tapping into man's first instinct, which they is are. selfishness. They are, absolutely. Um, but um, they make us distractingly insecure, mm -hmm. and we fall victim to body shape. We do. I mean, they, they distract us from away, away from who we are. Like, our own... You know, it's like... We're not, it's not a flaw that I'm, you know, like 5'10". It's not a flaw, but when I'm around everyone that's six foot, it sure feels like that, right? <laughs> now, okay, now, now that's my interpretation of it, okay? But, but if, um, but if I see myself as, hey, I'm uniquely made, you know, I'm like, I'm created and I'm able to leverage everything that I do to make a deeper impact, to live, yeah. then I'm not gonna be worried about that, okay? So then secondly, what if, like, what if I have acne and then I'm around people who have beautifully, you know, flawless skin and I'm like, what do I do? And then I'm seeing all these makeup products to like, yeah. you know, fix that or whatever. Well, okay, then I'm, of course I don't want to have acne, but you know, I see that, okay, if I, in order to fit in, I have to buy these products yeah. to fit in. Okay, yeah. no, right? I mean, that's a weird... It's not okay. It's not okay. Yeah. But I mean, it's just like things like that that society is leveraging to, you know, just to create this false identity. Um, and it could be anything. It could be with like weight loss. It could be with hair color. Like you mentioned earlier, it could yeah. be with skin tone, you know? Like yeah. the color of your skin, like skin bleaching. You know, anything that... No, the acting with those a little weird, okay? Yeah. <laughs> because we can all have... But I mean... But skin tone, anything like that, just to lever just to change and alter our appearance when it doesn't need to be changed at all. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not right. It's dangerous. Or uh, like making it somebody believe that it's a flaw, like you said. Right. When it's not a flaw in the first place, it's Absolutely. just I don't it's it's so bad and they make you think that there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's um, true. Yeah, I mean not only do we need to present our bodies, you know, just as a living sacrifice, um, you know, just to Christ, to ourselves, and not to society, because that's really what we're doing, right? Yeah. We're sacrificing our identity mm -hmm. and the way we see ourselves to society. And our money. And our money. <laughs> oh, wow. Good point. Yeah. And our money to society just to change our identity to something that it says it needs to be, yeah. right? I mean, we can't be doing that. Um, we need to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to a new identity, the identity that is based in who we're created to be, which is the identity of Christ, right? right. Um, and our intentions and our actions too, right? Yeah. Everything, and I love, I really do love what Romans one to uh, Romans twelve one through two says um, it says do not be conformed to this world do not be the conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind yeah. just to be constantly renewing our mind yeah. every day because it is being renewed on social media if we're watching it yeah. right um, and and just to like so that, and just to allow Christ to be our guide and you know that is tested and, and to leverage discernment yeah. and what Christ wants for us and what is good and acceptable under him mm -hmm. and who we who we were created to be you know I mean it's 
you know, we have to stop letting marketing and social media, you know, promote itself inside ourselves, right? Yeah. I mean, we have to we have, we have to stop that, um, and we also need to stop a self-centered side of body shaming, right? Um, and that starts with us. You know, if we allow if we allow ourselves to shame our own body and shame our own image, then nothing's going to change. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much, how new, how many new products that you purchase, or how many self-help books you read, mm -hmm. or even how many verses in the Bible we read. Yeah. If we still allow ourselves to be, you know, conformed to this world system, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because we're never going to change. Yeah. It starts with our own identity. I really believe, like, you know, just kind of speaking, you know, outside the um, topic, I really believe that if we every day just start with who am I mm. and who am I going to be today, yeah. just that simple, you know, question, I think that that'll help leverage every decision we make in every day. You and know? Not you know, not only asking yourself that first thing in the morning, yeah. but um, when you're scrolling through something or, you know, about to put something in your cart, you know, when you're shopping online, you think, you know, why am I buying this? Am I buying this because this is, you know, something that um, is filling some sort of, you know, some sort of uh, emptiness, a yeah. void, some sort of um, sense of uh, dissatisfaction I know. with ourselves. Or are we buying this because it's just, you know, something that we want and it's not necessarily something bad? And I have that problem all the time. And guys, we're just about to finish up. We have two more minutes and then we're out of here. So thank you for hanging in. Um, if you're just now tuning in, click share, share this broadcast out. We just wrapped it up and I want you to rewind and watch it in its entirety. But like Sophie was saying, um, I have that problem quite a bit because I... I was raised to believe that image is everything. Mm -hmm. That image, you know, it's. I was really, I was really raised to believe this one kind of principle, or not only, but it was a big part of my life that um, um, that clothes make the man. Clothes make the man. <laughs> clothes make the man. I mean, it's kind of a. I think it's probably from my dad's generation, but. Clothes make the man, and I always, I was always okay. How I look, if I always look good, if I always dress right, if I always drive the right car, then people are gonna think that I'm this image, and they're gonna, the doors are gonna open, you know. And what I realized is that none of that's true, none of it's true at all. I mean, I, it, it, it leads to a life of like complete loneliness, yeah. you know. Um, and a loss of, ide of identity because I am, you know, I just, you don't really know who you are, yeah. you know, and then you're, you're kind of stuck in this cycle of, well, maybe it's because I'm not wearing this type of outfit, or maybe I need to change to a different genre, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have like identity changes, right? Yeah. So you like, <laughs> you, have this, you have this whole like hipster phase, and then this urban phase, and then it's like preppy, you know, business phase, and then this artsy phase, and you just kind of shift, and you're changing your identity, and you don't really know who you are, right? And, and it's because you, you stop looking at who's inside, and you start yeah. looking on what's around you and trying to fit in and conform and it's dangerous it is. yeah it is. Um, not like kind of like what we said earlier like not only do we need to stop encouraging this kind of promotion of these certain products that are like that lead us to believe that we need to fix certain things yeah but we need to look at ourselves like you've been saying and just yeah. really looking at our own intentions and really questioning you know what we're looking at because I feel like sometimes we just kind of let things go completely over our heads we do but it's kind of hard because it's it's this government it's just society it's our country but I think it's I think it's global too yeah definitely. I mean it's global um, and I really believe the key word here is society um, because 
there are really two societies. You know, there's a human-based society where we create all of this so that people will buy so that we can live and afford another day, right? right? Or there's the other society, which I think it's, soci it's the society of the New Testament. It's Christ. I think Christ, his introduction um, to earth, you know, on earth, was to create a completely new society that is, goes away from this self-centeredness, this self-helpedness, and it's um, a selfless, yeah. where we don't worry about what's around us, we just allow ourselves to see ourselves and to be ourselves and then not having to leverage um, around us and it's not having to buy this new fill in the blank to feel like you have to fit in because when you start can, when you start living that life where I have to buy this to fit in then you're a part of a society and you're already under, under that control and you're in a system you're in a system mm -hmm. And you can't compete in that because unless you are a brand like Nike, like Reebok, like whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you're that, that head of that company, you know, but even then you're still competing to stay at that point yeah. of, of, of height, yeah. right, the hedonism. So it's, it's like chasing the wind, you know, in Solomon when he was king. You know, that's why oh, yeah. he, he came to his realization that being a part of this system, it's chasing the wind. You'll never catch it. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that's just completely unattainable. It's unattainable. It's unattainable. And how much time are you going to exhaust in your life to finally figure it out? Like, I know so many families that are divorced because of money, yeah. that are broken up because of businesses that went wrong. The family was fine until the business went bankrupt and then the family went bankrupt. Yeah. The relationships, you know? I mean, so many families are broken up because of businesses and companies and careers. And it's a part of a system that's broken, not them. Mm -hmm. But that's why Christ is so important because Christ takes away, it, it's a new system. It's a new economy system too, right? Yeah. Completely new, and that's what's so valuable. Anyway, well, that's good. Yeah. Good stuff, guys. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in our broadcast today. And as always, from our space to yours, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye, Miss Life. Take right. care.